My name is Chris Toomey, and this is Back to the Future of Mapping in Tableau, not to be confused with The Future of Mapping by Craig Bloodworth. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm not British. I am bald, but this is not that session. Um, very quick background on who I am. Uh, I work at Mapbox, but I've been in the Tableau community for over seven years now. I've done everything from, I built every dashboard known to mankind. Uh, I helped write the original Tableau automation package. A, quick, a lot of the quick starts you see on AWS right now is from research that I did. Christy Martini right there and I worked on bringing Tableau and React together. Um, so I like to hack on things. I like to help push Tableau. And that's kind of what we're here to do today. Um, first thing to note, everything you are going to see here today is real. It's not something that may be shipping or you can buy at this point, but it is real, it works. I can promise you that if you want to see the code, I will show it to you. But we're not gonna, there's no gimmicks, there's no parlor tricks, this is real. Now, why is that important? Because at the end of this hour, I want you to feel like that you can go out and build something you couldn't build before. We want you to be inspired about not just what you've seen at the keynotes the last couple of days, but you can go home and take some of these techniques or take some of these capabilities and say, I had a problem and now I can solve it. That's what we're here to help you with today. Now, depending on timing, we may have quest you may have questions. Uh, we could, we'll do a QA and a uh, at the end if there's time. Otherwise, you can look for my Mapbox colleagues in the back. They have these really cool black shirts. We got Ryan over there. We got Hannah and Alan over there. We have Rebecca in the back corner. We're here to help. So we will stay as long as you want to answer all of your questions. Now, uh, before we really get rolling, there's a couple of other really cool map sessions that you should check out if maps are your jam. Um, the first one is Geography Matters. This is led by the Tableau product team for maps, Kent and Ashwin and Ryan. If you want all the answers, go see that session. Um, the next one is Map Hacking by Constantine Greger and Sarah Battersby. Uh, who beats me for the greatest Twitter handle. She's the maps overlord. I'm Socket Toomey. Um, but if you want to see the really cutting edge stuff, go see what, what Sarah and Constantine have for you. Okay, let's get started. Now, I know I, it really is cool to see everybody here. Uh, I know you may have seen something about vector maps in Devs on Stage with Amanda Luthi today. Uh, you may have seen our logo in the corner of that. Um, so yes, we are, that, that's something we are helping with. Uh, you may also be here because Alan Walker said you should go check this out. Um, you may just love maps, or you just need to sit down for an hour after walking 10 kilometers yesterday. But for whatever your reason for being here, I appreciate it, so welcome. Um, and so I wanna talk to you a little bit about who Mapbox is, and then we're gonna show you some really cool stuff. Now, Mapbox is a global platform that helps you solve location problems, any location problem. We like to think of it as Legos. We have pieces that can be combined together to, so to solve a, a problem at the scale of your business. Um, we have kind of three core building blocks, that's maps. Those are the tech and the data to put your map on any device, phone, at, tablet, in a car, on your, you know, on your Apple Watch, whatever. We can power maps anywhere and everywhere. And second is search. This is transforming data from one type of geographic into another. That's maybe a Latin long into an address or vice versa. Looking things up so you know where things are. And the third is navigation. This is how you discover how to get from place to place, whether it's straight lines, in a car, on a bus, or trying to find the most optimum route you know, because you gotta make 15 different stops. We power all of this and a lot more, but I know that's really abstract. Like, yeah, sure, you have all these things. Let's I'm gonna show you a really cool example that I built um, that might make this a little more real. So what I'd like you to do is take out your phone and hopefully you can get on the conference Wi-Fi. If not, you shouldn't have a big deal. Um, but to us, location is very personal. It's about where I am, where you are, where you are from. And so 
I built this very quick example. If you go to this link, uh, Capitalization Matters, uh, you're going to get presented with a screen that looks like this. Now, that dot is us here in New Orleans. And what I want you to do is I want you to type in the box where you're from. I'm from Pasco, Washington. Ah, there you go. A.mbx.io slash capital S show capital M me. Cool. So while you're navigating there on this, what is probably painfully slow Wi-Fi, you're going to see this. This is just a Mapbox map with a geocoder in the corner. And I'm going to click on, well, on an app, it's probably going to be at the bottom. And just, that's where I'm from. That's my home. Now, you may say, I'm from Kenya, or I'm from Singapore, or I'm from somewhere else. Pasco's pretty rural, so there's not much out there. But if that's right, if that's where you think you want to say you are from, just click the blue button. Now, nothing's going to happen here, but something's going to happen here. This is a real-time map of every person in this room. This is where you are from. This is us. Now, this is a really contrived example, but there's nothing more important about location than where you're from and where you're going. In all honesty, this took about 20 minutes to build, a couple pieces of Mapbox code, a little bit of a stream, and we're done. But it's, 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 that's how easy it is to bring location into your business, into your application. Now, I'm going to leave this up and running. So if you want to hand that link out to your friends or come see us and think, maybe by the end of the, end of the day, we'll have an entirely different looking map. OK, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about why you're here. Now, you have a little bit of a sense of what Mapbox can do. So let's talk about what Mapbox and Tableau can do, and more importantly, what that future looks like. Now, you saw devs on stage today, and you may have gone to Kent Martin's session yesterday, and you may have seen some things with Mapbox. I'm not going to talk about that. Because that's now. I'm talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about a year from now. I'm talking about two years from now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hop in this DeLorean. We're going to go in the future a little bit. And we're going to play. We're going to see some things that might be possible shortly or in maybe a little bit longer of a time frame. Is everybody ready? Yeah? OK. The first thing we're going to talk about is map design. Now, since the very first Mapbox Tableau integration, you've been able to bring a custom map into Tableau. You've been using one of our flagship tools, Mapbox Studio, to really design beautiful maps. And what you're seeing here is a custom style our cartographers have built called Moonlight. Studio allows you to take a map like this and make it pop, not just from a design standpoint, but from a, the ability to visualize data on top, because we want your data and your story to shine through. Now, as of right now, to do this, you have to like be in Tableau, time out, go over to mapbox.com, jump in studio, get a, get a link, come back, and whatever you were working on is gone. You forgot it. You've lost that flow, which is really painful. And I know that I've been like, I'm on a mission, I got a thing, and all of a sudden I got to stop and I forgot, and then I'm like, I might as well go home. But what if we could do this in Tableau whenever we want? Well, let's do it. Here I have a map that's kind of boring and some metrics that are not interesting at all, but they're metrics. But I, I kind of want a better map. So how would I do this? Well, we have a very small extension that allows us to bring Studio directly into Tableau.
give it a sec. We'll give it a sec to load. Um, but what this does, assuming it goes, is 80, 80. Um, what we're going to be able to do. No? OK. What you'd see is this. This is a new version of Studio. The map tiles will come in, so just bear with me. A new version of Studio that can operate inside of desktop. And it gives us some control. It allows us to say, well, you know, maybe I'm here in New Orleans. Maybe I want something that's got some streets. It's a little bit easier to look at. Maybe I need just get some inspiration. Okay, this looks good. It's a good starting point. Maybe, maybe I want this water to be, I don't know, maybe black. Let's say one o. Oh, one, eight, two, one. Okay, looks good. Now maybe I want the foreground to be gold. D, three, D, C, H, D. Oh, that's not right. D, C. Close enough. Now, how many football fans do we have in the room today? Has anybody got Alvin Kamara on their fantasy team? Everybody wish they had Alvin Kamara on their fantasy team? Those colors look familiar? Yeah. What this will do is it will upload this. It, this will take this style, it will upload it to your Mapbox account. And when it's done, it's going to spit out the token that you need to drop that map directly into desktop, and you can go along. Now, since the internet doesn't seem to be cooperating with me, I'll cut straight to the punchline. Oh, here we go. Just bear with me. One. That's a little closer. OK. OK, let's see if that works. But what that will do, it will then allow, give us everything we need to drop that custom map directly into Tableau. And then when it's done, while we're waiting, we can put our geometry, our data, on the map. Sorry, bad joke. Now, I was defeated by the conference gods there, but it's OK. Um, that's something that we're actively thinking about. How do we make the studio experience, the map design experience, easier? Are you serious? Oh, that's OK. I'll fix that. One second. Because we know that map authoring is tough. We also want you to have an experience in your Tableau environment that is easy to use. The second is context. Now, most of the time, we have location data. That's we, we put our points on a map. We maybe make a chloropleth shapes, fill them at point you know, size, color, maybe a, a shape or two. Maybe we use a density plot or a heat map. But what happens next? You're just kind of stuck with that set of data. You don't know, you can't build anything on top of it that gives that data more context, that relates it to other points on the map, or it to you, or it to your customers. 
This gets more complicated when you start thinking about a set of data, a geospatial set. Now I can draw one, but it's somewhat imprecise. Um, and I can do a radial search with a technique uh, like Rody Zakovich is, you know, he draws a circle on the map, or you can use the radial search uh, diagram or filter selection in, a, in desktop, but that's not really all that great. Um, but what if you had to answer a question of, I have N stores, how many customers are within Y miles of that store? What if I want to understand commuting patterns? What if I want to understand movement, modality through, through space? What do you do? Well, right now, the best you can do is Alteryx. This workflow is sped up like 3x, and it takes about 25 minutes to do. It's also not cheap. Um, it's a really hard question to answer. And more importantly, you have to rerun it every single time your question changes. That's really not optimal. That's not Tableau. That's, that doesn't help you, especially if you've got to call the Alteryx guy and help fix this. Now, it works, it's powerful, it's great, but it's not really the experience that we want for you. Um, so we've thought about a better way, or at least what we think is a better way. So if you'll bear with me. I've gotta make a quick switch. So we, here we see another map with another extension with another geocoder. So let's search New Orleans. We're gonna get a nice zoom into New Orleans. What this extension is doing is it's going back to the workbook and pulling the data out, taking that Latin long, geocoding it on, putting it on the map, but more importantly, it's taking that categorical information, those dimensions, and putting it into an interface that we can search um, and we can ask questions about. Now, what's the first question? Well, let's, let's see if we can find something fun. I happen to be from Seattle, so I like coffee. And there's a lot in here. Let's see if I can find coffee. Yeah, we'll go to baked goods. So, I will drive, or actually I'll hop on a bike and ride 20 minutes to get a good donut. I'm not a big beignet fan, but I like donuts. Um, so I want a bike, but I'm not gonna ride more than 20 minutes. So let's see what happens. If, let's see if there's any good baked goods spots within 20 minute bike ride of us here. This is an isochrone. Each ring represents a five minute bike from here all the way out to 20 minutes. So that red, that red ring is how far you can go on a bike right now. This isn't a car, this is hopping on a bike and pedaling. Now, okay, next question. This is something that everybody at TC struggles with. Where do I go to find a good drink? Not like a Coors Light, if that's your thing, that's cool. Um, I, want a, I want a drink, I want a guy with a twirly mustache and a leather apron and really fancy ice mixing me up things that smoke. That's what I want. So let's see if we can find. Drinking places. It's a great category. Apparently New Orleans knows who comes to New Orleans. But you know, I'm really okay driving for that. Be safe, but also I'll, I'll drive for something like that. So we've, we've changed our parameters a little bit. We have these points. Let's see what, what's in a 20 minute drive. These are what is reachable 20 minutes by car. And we can see that as we might expect, there's a whole bunch right around here. What ones? Well, we've got the Crew Lounge, 700 Club, Balcony Music Club. There's a whole bunch. We're adding context to our data. Last question. Now, you may have heard the folk song about this house in New Orleans. I think they call it um, Rising Sun. And the people who go there tend to get ruined. Maybe 
Maybe you find that house tonight and you need a lawyer tomorrow. Is there a lawyer within a five minute walk of the conference center? I hope you don't need one, but you might. That's good because there's a bunch. Now, this is just a toy, right? This is just us calling the R isochrone API, pulling data out of Tableau. But what's really beautiful about this is now we can, because it's an extension, it's a first class citizen, we can take this data out, these sets, bring it into the rest of our dashboard and use it to filter, use it as sets, create interactions on top of it where data didn't exist before. You don't have to do this beforehand. You can do it at runtime whenever you want. Now, we just built this. You, you can come by our booth and play around with it, but it, we really wanted to be able to show you what is possible. And soon, this isn't just driving, we'll have traffic. We'll have all of these other pieces in there so you can have a real-time understanding of your data as it relates to the space that it's actually in. So we've got a, next up, we're gonna talk about data enrichment, which is a fancy way of saying geocoding. This is one of the most common questions that we get that I have heard, I've experienced this. I need to look something up. And now while the Tableau geocoder is great, it's gonna be even better when Mapbox is powering it in the 2019 release. But it can be tough when the roles that Tableau provides don't cover your data. Things like airports, or more importantly, things like addresses. How many people here have a data set that has an address in it? All those people who don't raise their hand, I think you're lying. You've all come across an address and you need to know where does that go on a map? How do I put that there? Desktop really isn't a good tool for this because it's meant to explore. It's not really meant to enrich. So this is really becomes a pre-analysis question, a prep question. Um, so let's go over to Tableau Prep and see what the art of the possible is right now. Um, right now, you can take that, those same current data roles and clean up your data and assign it to cities and states and whatever, but you can't, you still can't do something custom. And while a custom role might get you there, you still got to process it. Um, what if this data doesn't match the role or we can't find a way to write a calculation that says, tell me where this place actually is. Now, most of the time you got to run again, run through Alteryx, or you got to find some janky website and open up a hundred different incognito windows and drop CSVs in, and maybe you have something and it's kind of okay, and then Google yells at you for violating their terms of service. Um, it's really, it's really suboptimal. So we need something better. Now I will warn you, there's a little bit of code here. I promise it's well documented and you don't need to worry about it, it's not scary. Um, how do we deal with address level geocoding? First, think back to yesterday. Tableau Prep has announced Python and R integration. So we're gonna, we're gonna leverage that a little bit. So I've written a very small notebook that will actually allow us to do geocoding. So we've got some, we've got some pieces here. We've got some standard libraries. We have the Mapbox GL uh, Jupyter integration so I can show you the results um, and just some cleanup. So the first thing, we say, let's go get us some data. And you're welcome to take a picture of this. That token's gonna get recycled tomorrow, so don't bother trying to run this. Um, and we're gonna define a geocode. So we're gonna go get some stuff, process it, bring out the coordinates, and spit it out. Now I have some sample data I've taken from uh, open addresses, and they're just lists of cities. They're just addresses in, in Washington. So there's an example of one. I won't run this whole thing through because I'm pretty sure uh, this will crash on the internet, but you can see the, the results. So we're just gonna take 20 of them. We're gonna run through and grab that subset, and then we're gonna geocode it. And that's where it says coordinates equals geocode. That we're gonna pass in an address, the list of addresses, and we're gonna, that number one is how 
fast we're going to go. And I'll cover that in a second. There they are, the top, ten, the top five geocodes. And there they are on a map. It's really that simple. This is, you take all the stuff at the bottom out, it's 12 lines of code. Now, why is that important? Um, it's important because it's to show you this isn't a challenging problem. And two, that we can fit into the workflows you already have. We can do this in R as well. We have a little bridge library that will basically run that however you want. Now, we wanted to show the platform in action, to show that it works. Now, it's only 20 addresses. And you're like, yeah, OK, but how fast can you go? We can do 100 that right now without the geocoding team yelling at me. I can do 100,000 addresses in 90 seconds. We can go faster than that, but I, I got to go ask permission. So speed, isn't, speed and size isn't a problem. And it's not just the United States. We can do this across the entire world, whether you're in Latvia or Singapore or Australia or Kenya, we can geocode. We can give you that data. Now, the second piece that I reason I showed you that is a little more exciting. And I got permission to share this slide, is that this is going to happen. You are going to get geocoding in prep. Now, I can't tell you when. I can't tell you what function it's going to take. It could be a role. It could be a calculation. It could be a script. But we are partnering with the prep team to make this happen. It, I, it's, and it's going to be that code running behind the scenes. So fear not. Your geocoding problems have been solved. It's coming. And we'll let you know when it does. And in the meantime, if you want to do this now, we can help you. We can give you a bridge that doesn't break your workflow later. OK. I've got one more thing to share with you. And then we can take some questions. This one will take a little while, so bear with me. This is less about convenience. And the last three things we've showed you about solving pieces of your workflow that are a little challenging. This is about the mission. This is about taking data that you have and seeing it and understanding it in different ways, in more impactful ways. So right now, we all know you can put data on a map, points, chloroplets, heat maps. But sometimes you need more horsepower. Sometimes you need to understand distribution. Sometimes you need um, to understand patterns. You need something that Tableau doesn't have. Just like we all want a hoverboard. It doesn't exist, but we all want it. So you may have seen a piece of this in Kent Martin's session yesterday, but today it's the full meal deal. So what we're going to show you goes back to something that actually started here. Now, if we go back and think about a map, it's just scatter plots on an image. Whether it's our maps or Tableau's maps, it's just scatter plots on an image. It's points on a plot. The challenge is that when we put those physical locations on a map and we think about them geographically, we lose the ability to have position mean anything. Because on a map, the point is just a location. It's just where it is. Um, and so that leaves us with color and size, which can be a little hard to parse sometimes. Because essentially, when we're trying to do some really in-depth analysis, we're not just interested in the points, but the distributions, how those metrics move, how they relate to each other. So I'm going to set the stage for what's coming with this. This is a scatter plot with a marginal histogram created by Zen master Ryan Sleeper. What's beautiful about this is it not only has the position of the data, so you can see how densely packed they are, but the metrics that are encoded on the axes are also encoded in histograms. So you can see those bunches literally expressed in the chart. Now, this becomes, this is impossible to do 
geographically because it's a map. How do I put a bar chart on a map? Like, how do I get more out of this data? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you. We, at Mapbox, have been working hard to launch an extension. This is the official Tableau Analytics extension. It is, it if it's not live in the gallery now, it will be live in the gallery next week. You can use it for free. You just take it and go. We built this to bridge the gap between some of the current capabilities in, in Tableau Maps and the features that we want and Kent wants and you want. Now, we'll go through a summary of everything at the very end, but we, the goal here is to give you more tools to explore, more ways to see and understand. So, like the marginal histogram, this is about context, this is about patterns, this is about distribution. Because, in all honesty, most of the time when you put stuff on a map, every metric you have is just a reflection of population density. That's statistically true. It's so, and so you can't do anything else with that if all you're looking at is population. We want to do more. So, we have a demo, we have a couple demos here. This is, this first is foot and vehicle traffic inside of uh, Toronto. So, let's go ahead and open up web editing. Web editing. We'll let the map reload. The first thing you'll notice is that just like before we're pulling data out, we get this really great bounding box zoom. So your data is always in context. If your data is covering the East Coast and the West Coast, you'll see it. If it's in Florida, you'll see it. We're not gonna be like, just put a point on a map and look at it over there. We're gonna keep it visible all the time. Um, it also just loads up. These maps are Tableau's maps. So they're out of the box, gonna work for you. Just go to town. Now, the first, the first set of visualizations we have are clusters. So we take these densely packed points and we cluster them using an algorithm and then we aggregate data up so you can see patterns. So let's, let's make some changes here. Let's pick the metric of, let's look at vehicle volume. This is people driving around the city of Toronto. And you'll notice that the metrics change. So all, we're looking at all of those data points inside of our data set clustered. So we'll come back to this. Let's maybe put it on, since we're looking at traffic, let's look at on the, what we call Mapbox Basic. It's a really fast and clean map for understanding streets. Um, and yeah, we'll just leave it at that for now. So let's go ahead and move around. We can see it's really fast and fluid. And we see that these clusters move, expand and contract as we interact with our data. So we can see there's a big cluster here and here. Zoom in, zoom in. And we're starting to see some patterns. Um, we also see on the right a really beautiful line chart just looking at traffic counts by year. So how much of this volume is generated when? So let's focus on 2010 to 2012. Passes the filter down, it interacts with your map so that as you work through your data in your flow, the map is updating. Clustering is great. It's a really cool way to bring densely populated data together without just having a, like, a, a bomb of points sitting on a map. Now, this is great, but what if we want to actually understand how those points go together? Uh, clusters are good, but we want to maybe grid this a little. Now, Tableau's had a, a hex grid for a while, but they don't have one like this. We can take that same data, and let's say we want to go with squares. So we've defined a five-mile square, a five-mile grid, we're aggregating those points underneath to understand how they relate to each other. 
taking the eight hour volume and adding it all up, generating the mean, generating the median. So we can flip through these metrics really quickly. We also have a count, so we can look at, if you just wanted to look at a density grid, how many points are in each specific space, you can do that. But what's fun is these are all customizable. Maybe you want a one mile grid. Maybe you are from Europe and you don't know what, you don't like to think about miles because the metric system is way better than whatever it is we use here in the United States and you want to use kilometers. There's a one kilometer grid. Maybe you don't like the number four and you like the number six, so let's use a hex grid. It's a really interactive way to parse and understand your data. I mean, it's a, it's a, really, it's a standard mapping feature and we're bringing it to Tableau because we, didn't, we thought that you wanted it. Now you also have a couple of other controls around how, how, the, like how you chop up the, the ranges, and that's all here at the bottom. But this will go as small as you know, a .01 meter grid if you want it, or it'll be as large as you want it. So customize it however you want. We can quickly change the metric. It'll repaint, and we'll move on. So that's grids, and that's clustering. Yes. Yeah, these are all, these are, all of these calculations are happening in your browser at runtime. Nothing here is pre-calculated. So everybody's experience will be different. It will work with your data. Okay, the next one is a little more fun. We're bringing Voronoi into Tableau. Now again, starts as a cluster as default because I didn't want to give away the viz. Uh, but if you've never heard of a Voronoi, it's essentially a way to, to carve up geographies so that every point is measuring how far every point is from every other point. So smaller Voronoi cells means that points are tight. Larger Voronoi cells mean that points are really far away. Think of it as like, in this context, how much market does each individual Starbucks store have? That's what this data set is. It's the top 25 cities by number of Starbucks. It's a little out of date, but it's pretty close. So if we transform this from a cluster to a Voronoi, we get this cool little faceted diagram. So we're really getting a set, we're able to give us a sense of how dense these points are and how close they are to each other. The more points you add, the more categories you add, the denser the grid, the, uh, the sharding becomes. So let's look at New York. Actually, let's go back, because I think we want to go back to basic. And let's look at New York. So we recalculate the Voronoi on the fly. We color it by the number of lattes that are sold, so you can see not only where the, where the stores are, but how much business they're doing. What's the metric that you're actually attaching to it? And we can, just like all the other ones, recalc on the fly, and we move on. So that's a Voronoi. That's also available out of the box. Uh, and the third one is a little special. So I'm gonna give me a second to set that up. Um, but it's something we've been excited about and really goes back to this concept of distribution. Now, how many of you have heard of the Tableau public author and Zen master, Mike Cisneros? Yes, okay. So Mike uh, published a viz a couple months ago um, using the ACLID data set, visualizing conflict. This is looking at the most dangerous places in the world and how people are at risk. You know, based from brutality, from government intervention, from whatever. Uh, and he built this absolutely stunning visualization um, to really bring that impact home. Um, 
But I thought that I could add something to this conversation by helping understand how those, that risk distributes, how that change happens. So I've, I've made a couple of changes, just something really basic. Again, I wanted to look at these patterns. And so we see that we have this, you know, looking at the type and then in the regions, and we notice that there's this really standout violence against civilians in middle Africa. So the map zooms down and we look at it and we can, again, this makes logical sense. We're seeing the Middle East is a dangerous place. Okay. Um, but what we really want to do here is understand change. And if you think about a map and you look at any other map that you, you, know, you go hiking and you see these elevation maps, these rings that are really close together when it's steep and really far apart when it's, um, when it's not, why couldn't that just be data? Why couldn't that just be my data moving over space and being able to understand how it changes? That would be, an, that would be a useful and like maybe an interesting way to think about your data. It's a marginal histogram on a map. So we built that. We call it a data elevation. Um, But first, I need to change this to the metric. Which is, there we go. Oh, really? Okay. It's, uh, All right. Just bear with me. I don't know why it's taking so long. This is an old version. Sorry? It, it's, it doesn't work. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's, we'll get there. Here we go. Just patience. So this metric is bound to the parameter up in the top. And we're going to go to a data elevation. Now this takes a little, takes a second because the calculation is a little more complicated. We have to go through the same gridding process. We have to interpolate a little bit. And if this works, it's, it will, uh, we'll create, we'll see these rings in our data set. If it doesn't, I have a screenshot, so don't worry about it. Um, because what's important here is that distribution, is that understanding of how data moves across space. Um, now, it looks like I might have pulled a, wrong, a, a bad version, but it's okay. Um, I'll show you what the, uh, the end result looks like, so just bear with me for a second. It's So many screenshots. Um, while I'm looking for it, I will show you one other feature. 
it's here. There it is. There we go. Okay, got it. And that one. Okay. All right. One of the things that we know that was important to a lot of users is three dimensions. So this extension brings extrusions and three dimension into Tableau for the first time. What you're looking at here is a data elevation of the total number of fatalities that occurred in Syria. Why is this important? Because now you can actually see the data that you're, you have been analyzing for a long time. You can see the people that, this, that are being affected in this region. That's what we're all here to do. We're all here to understand and make decisions and take action. And we affectionately refer to that, not affectionately, but uh, this, is, this data set brings out what we call the Tower of Death. Before, it's just points and sizes on a map. This is real. You can literally explore it and touch it and move around in the map like you couldn't before. I apologize for not being able to show it to you in real life, but it's, you know, demo things happen. So to quickly finish up, this extension is available now. You can come talk to us at the booth and we'll, we'll give you the treks or you can download it from the extensions gallery. And since that last slide was a, li was a little bit, you know, slow and a little depressing, here's a picture of a puppy. Okay, so quick recap of all the things that we've shown you here today. Styling and desktop. This was proof of concept only. It's an active area of investigation for us at Mapbox in partnership with Tableau. Isochrones, it can be done. Our example was a kind of a toy, but it's also something that we can help integrate for you if that's something you want. Geocoding, proof of concept, pending some features and some partnership, but it's gonna happen. I don't have a timeline for you. And the advanced analytics extension is free, open source soon, and it's available now. If you want some help with it, you can come talk to us or just play around. And if you make something cool, let us know. Tweet us at Mapbox, hashtag Mapbox for BI, um, or just, you know, share it. We're really excited to see what you can build. We're really excited to be a part of this community. Uh, I really appreciate your time and your patience. Uh, if you want to run the survey, great. If not, that's okay too. Um, happy to take questions. Other than that, thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your conference.